Hi guys! Hi! We are back and my name is Kat. My name is Takina. And today we're going to be working on this fun activity creating flowers. Gorgeous pretty flowers! Now for you teachers, if you're wondering when can you use this activity, anytime you want. Is it spring? Is it summer? Is it Valentine's Day? Mother's Day? Anything! Any day. <laughs> oh, so we got this activity from a lovely person named Dan Schiffman and he is in charge of the Coding Train YouTube channel. You guys should definitely check him out. He has a lot of cool stuff there. And so this is kind of like our take on the mathematical flower activity that he did. We kind of took it and made it just a little bit more simpler for everyone to understand. To start out, we're gonna look at polar coordinates and get a better understanding of what those are. So if we look at this beautiful graph, we see an x and y coordinate, this is what we mostly are familiar with. Mm -hmm. When we describe a point, we describe it in terms of x and y positions, so how far it is along the x-axis and y-axis. But this time we're going to be looking at these new terms, r and theta. r is the radius, a distance from the origin to the point, and then we also have theta, the angle it creates. And then, so in order to really understand the huge you know, things going on here, we have to remember SOHCAHTOA, and that just means that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent, but for this particular activity, we're only really concerned with sine and cosine, and we will not be using tangent for our calculations. Okay, so looking at this triangle, our sine of theta, this angle right here, is going to be y over a radius, and our cosine is going to be x over the radius. Okay, let me zoom in on functions we're going to be using. So as I mentioned before, x is, uh, x is equal, sine of theta is equal to y over r, which is why this y of theta is equal to r of theta times sine theta. And same goes for x, x of theta is equal to r of theta times cosine of theta. But then, we're also going to be using this function right here. A very fancy function or variable function at that. And it is r of theta is equal to r max times cosine of some integer variables n and d, so n over d times theta. Mm -hmm. So what we can tell from here is that our radius is in terms of theta. So we can find radius based on what theta is. Yep, and then we'll also be changing the parameters of n and d throughout the activity to see what kind of shapes we get. Okay, and as we go with that, we need to keep in mind that theta is going to be in radians and not degrees. And we're going to start with theta equal to zero. And each step that we make, we're going to be increasing it by a little bit. So yeah, let's see what we can create. So for our first step, as we see here, we're actually... Step two is basically just translating the equations that we set up there and making them into like computer form. So the first one says r equals r max times cosine n over d plus theta, and that's going to be our variable r. Times theta. Yeah. <laughs> and then once we get our r value, we're going to use that to calculate our x and our y values, which again, the x and y is just using cosine and sine, which was also discussed earlier. And then our draw point function is going to draw actual like individual points of x and y, which will turn out to be a flower. It may look like a line, but it's actually individual points, which we're going to show later how to make it look like that. And then lastly, we have our theta value that every time it calculates theta, it will add 0 0.01 or it can add 0 0.05. You know, however fast you want it to go, that's how you would determine that. Yeah, so if you've seen some of our previous videos, you are probably already familiar with the draw function. If not, draw function just runs over and over and over again, mm -hmm. unless we physically stop it. <laughs> and this function is going to be calculating our value, then calcu calculating x and y depending on what our r is, and then drawing a point for that specific x and y. Mm -hmm. And because our r depends on theta, x and y end up depending on theta, so every step when it, calcu when it finds those points, it's going to change theta, and that way it's going to draw another point, a new point after, and it's just going to keep going and going. And it's going to make a pretty flower, or a circle, when it does it. So now, 
we get to check to make sure that our code is running smoothly. And the first thing we're gonna do is set n to zero to see what shape we get. Okay, so if you click on the link below, or there's also gonna be one in the description, it opens a code editor. <laughs> so originally it's set to n equals one and d equals one, but we're gonna change it to n equals zero to look at the simplest form. Why we're doing that is, okay, I'm gonna zoom, in for a second. zoom it in. Yeah, now we can all see. <laughs> so going back to our uh, line where it defines r, we said that it's equal to r max times cosine of n over d times theta. Mm -hmm. If our n is equal to zero, the inside of cosine is automatically going to be equal to zero since we are multiplying times zero. Mm -hmm. And we know that cosine of zero is one. So that should pretty much be the same as if we would get rid of cosine function entirely. So that would be the same as saying that r is equal to r max. So we are supposed to get a circle. So let's check if that's what we get. Okay, so it starts graphing it. So keep in mind that the origin is at the center of the square. And it's making it look like a perfect circle too. Yes. And the reason behind it is we started angle is equal to zero. So right here, there, imagine there would be a line mm -hmm. and our x-axis and the angle is equal to zero and the distance from the origin would be our, our max. And then as the angle is increasing like this the distance gonna stay the same so we just end up getting this circle a perfect circle <laughs> okay and why is this circle the specific size if we look at our code we see that our r max is defined as 190 the reason behind this is uh, our screen runs from negative 200 to 200 in x direction and negative 200 to 200 in y direction. So by setting it to 190, we make sure that whatever we graph doesn't run outside of our window because we know the cosine is always going to be between negative 1 and 1. Yes. <laughs> so if we multiply times 190, it's going to be between negative 190 and 90, 190. So it will never go off the screen. 